Hey everybody, I'm Bob Baker with Jazz Guitar Today, and we're here today with Ed Cherry. Hey Ed, how you doing? Ed, how you doing, Bob? Thanks doing? for having me. Well, hey, thanks for thanks for coming on. As, as, as I try to tell people, you know, we're not about history. We 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 know that you play with Dizzy Gillespie and, and you started doing that in 1978. And right. Uh, but I find something really interesting. That that was a, an era where Miles had a bunch of guitar players, you know, playing with him. Uh, I wanted to get into something else completely different, but I think this is interesting. And and I, 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 how do you think that it came to be that Dizzy decided he wanted a guitar player? And how did you come into that mix? And um, you know how do how do you view all of that and how that went down? Well, Dizzy's had uh, guitars since uh, as, as the basis. Uh, since I think it was 1951, Kenny Burrell was the first guitar player to play without a piano player in Dizzy's group. And um, Kenny was still in, in school then, so he couldn't travel, but I think he did a month or two in Detroit with Dizzy's band, Sands Piano. And um, who did he have? Uh, he had less span, but there was, there, was a guitar, there was a piano in the band at that point. Junior Mance was playing piano. George Davis, I think it started with George Davis in the early 70s. George Davis was a great studio player, mostly R&B player, who in the last years of his life was uh, doing Broadway. But uh, Dizzy had the band with George Davis. And then uh, Al Gaffa. Al had, uh, well, in the beginning of Al's run, Mike Longo was in the band. And then Mike left. And after Mike left, he never really hired a pianist again, except for a short time with Walter Davis, about a year or two. And uh, then he called me back into the band. But And then uh, after Al Gaffer, Rodney Jones, great Rodney Jones. And then uh, Rodney left the band after three years or so and uh, recommended me for the gig. Uh, Dizzy liked the uh, rhythmic aspect of the guitar, you know, short rhythms, small chords, because Dizzy played a lot of notes, you know, so yeah. uh, the guitar, the guitar didn't get in the way when it was accompanying him, because they were like, you know, just three note chords, four note chords. You rarely play six note chords. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, two, two, two notes, three notes, four notes, you know, he liked that. You know, so uh, it it uh, it suited him. You know, gave him space to move around. Right. You know, you know? I'm really glad we're we're having this conversation because you know, I obviously I don't follow horn players like I do guitar players, but I did not know that uh, about Dizzy Gillespie. I he wasn't somebody that I spent a lot of time really studying, uh, except yeah, for. Right. When I, when I was learning a solo to a tune that um, I was told he had the best solo on. So I, <laughs> I, I got into that. Probably. <laughs> but I did. Yeah. But I did um, back when we were talking about getting together a month or so ago, I spent a bunch of time, you know, watching you with his band, you know, on yeah. uh, YouTube. And I, um, wish I knew what I know now. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Go back in time with, with the knowledge that I have now. In that oh, situation. Yeah. Excuse my, excuse my expression but shit you're not the only one brother yeah right <laughs> oh man i can say that about wives you know <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway um yeah i probably need to get off of that subject um yeah but you were full of piss and vinegar back then man yeah <laughs> you know what i'm saying i mean you were yeah you were driving it you know. Yeah, well, I was I was having fun, you know. I was yeah. trying to put, I was trying to play fast and <laughs> play play, you know, chop stuff and you know. But it took me a long time to figure out where I was at, you know. Yeah, you know, that that old Clint Eastwood, uh, you know, man's got to know his limitations. So I, you know, I I I settled down and uh, started uh, making trying to make each note count rather than just playing flurries of notes that went nowhere, <laughs> you know? 
you know, a, a lot of guys as as they get older, I hate to say not as get old, but as they get older and yeah. more mature, you can be mature and not be old. Uh I'll say the same thing, you know. Okay? Right. Uh say the same thing, which is which is just a truism, you know. You just you want it to you know, you want it to always sound like music and not like you're showing off, I think is the right, right. Is the main. But you were rhythmically, um rhythmically you were a lot more um not not this is not good or bad it's just a it's an observation rhythmically you were you know really really pushing yeah well, it was just it's just uh from my r and b roots you know I, yeah. I was playing uh in funk bands and blues bands and I really studied that stuff and i uh i I knew what it was supposed to sound like and I knew the energy involved and you know I always carried that with me. You know, starting James Brown, Cold Sweat, 1965. You know, I was I was checking all of that stuff out. You know, Cool in the Gang and Booker T and the MGs and you name it. I was I was checking it out. So I just carried that into Dizzy's thing because he wanted that. Yeah. He wanted that. You know, and I was like, Yeah, I'm down with that. So that's where I'm, that's where I'm going. <laughs> that's right up my alley. That's where I'm going. The, the, the that's right that... up my alley. Well, that's kind of where I'm going. That that you, I was trying to get into the mind of Dizzy. Why, you know, why you, and um, mm -hmm. and I'm asking you that question. And 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 obviously that's kind of the answer. That because you you had that R and B blues thing going on. Yeah, he, that's what he wanted in a big you know, way. He, he wanted that raw funk, you know, blues thing. And I was, you know, I was all about that. You know. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> you still are, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, no yeah. doubt. Oh you know, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I never, I never left any of that behind me. Even on the jazz gigs, you oh, know, no, like I, to yeah, all of the jazz gigs that I play, I always like inject some funk in there, or you know, you it, don't it, inject had... funk in it. It's it's <laughs> it. I mean, you're you're playing funk, and by the way, here's some jazz. I mean, it's like I love it. Man. I love it. Yeah, you know yeah, so. Well, when you and Peter Bernstein play together, yeah. you know, I mean, it's so different. Your styles are so different. Both great. Yeah. Both yeah. great. But, you know, Peter's all about, uh, now, boy, this is, I'm going to get in all kinds of trouble here, but, you know, there's a, there's an intellectualism going on with him, mm -hmm. his, his, his harmony choices and all this kind of right. stuff. And right. then when you're playing, it's, it's you know, it's it's the feel, it's the rhythm, it's the, you know, the funk. Right. And right. the blues and the R and B thing right. going on, and and yeah. you can see because I I know I I know from uh, watching you play from when you were younger that you can burn the shit up and down that fingerboard. Yeah, but I don't I don't do that. I don't, no, I know, but I know you can't. That's not me anymore. Yeah, but I know you can. <laughs> Some people yeah. don't do it because they can't. Yeah. You know, and uh, I know you can, and and but I'm watching the, the what you emphasize you know when, when you're mm -hmm. when you're playing what you emphasize is there's no doubt how deep your pocket is you know it's just like yeah. it's just yeah. you know that's just like really the thing well you know that's that's my thing you know and, yeah. and that should that should be everybody's thing is time and pocket you know and then everything else comes after <laughs> you, you know, know. That, that was that was that was Dizzy's thing, you know, to have the have the rhythm and the time correct, and right. and everything follows. What know? did Doctor Lonnie Smith say? If they're not doing this, you're not doing it right, you know. Right. <laughs> if they're right. not popping right. their heads, you know, they're right. not doing it right. But the the thing the thing playing with Pete is that you know he under he knows all of that stuff. Oh yeah. You know, he he knows the funk. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he's and he's a great booze player, you uh, know. Yeah. But, uh, but you know he's got his thing, you know, yeah. and and, uh, and and we we fit, you know, because he understands, I understand, and we stay out of each other's way, and you know, yeah, nobody's it's, it's all good. Neither one of you two. It's not and it, and and it's not a shootout, you know. It's like we're not like make we're like trying to make music, you know, not trying to outplay each other. We're no, just, neither uh, one of you two is getting serving the music. We're yeah. just trying to serve the music. You know? Well, I was, neither one of you two is getting lost down the trail, you know. I mean, you, <laughs> you, 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 you know, you know what's going on. You know, uh, the respect, you know, that you have for each other, and the respect for the music that you you guys mm -hmm. have, because it, it's all about, it's all about the music. When I'm listening to that, it's all about. You oh know, yeah, 
Yeah, that's all about what it should be about. Oh, absolutely. At all times. Yeah. So it's not about me. It's about we. Yeah. So what's your favorite format to play in? Is it the organ trio? Actually, yeah, next to the guitar trio, guitar, bass, drums. There's complete freedom there. I can take the band any kind of way I want. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoy that more. It's it's uh, it's it's the greatest platform for a guitar player, I think. I like just it. guitar, guitar, bass, drums, boom. Right. Yeah, make some music. Let's swing. Let's play yeah. some blues. Play a tune. Play a bossa nova. Right. Mill Jackson said, you know, bossa blues, and, and what else did he say? And ballad. <laughs> the three the three b's <laughs> bossa blues and ballad you know so there you go make it happen it's all on you <laughs> i you know i i i i love it i love it yeah. and you have to, and i love yeah. it for that reason because i want to see what the guitar players you know i, yeah. I just i want to feel that thing you know i want to know what's going yeah, on yeah and if it's and like you said if the people aren't doing this yeah, and making, it's not swinging yeah, yeah it doesn't it doesn't move me if it's not doing that yeah well actually lonnie smith <clears throat> dr lonnie smith said that i'm just i'm just standing under his shade tree if you will to use a uh a russell malone term i was going to ask you um you're playing out at the rocky mountain archtop festival oh yeah you know ted uh, ted uh ted ludwig hooked me up with that yeah I did. I did a gig with Ted. He invited me down to where is he from? Memphis. Yeah, is that where he's from? yeah, Memphis and Arkansas as well. Yeah, I, I went down there for th two or three or four days, and you know, he said, "Ed, you should be up there in that in that uh, festival." I'm going to talk to Peter, and he did, and Peter contacted me right away and was very nice, very generous, and uh, I was like, "Yeah," you know, I usually don't do that kind of stuff, you know those. These guitar festivals and Nam and all that stuff. I, I I've never been to Nam, the Nam show, and I've never been to any of these guitar things. You know that just wasn't me. But uh, um, Peter was so nice. Peter Henriksen was so great. I just yeah. I couldn't turn it down. We we started this magazine about five years ago, and um, so we've noticed that energy has come back into jazz guitar you know mm -hmm. there are more gigs there are more things going on there's you know interest in the music yeah. audiences yeah, are I think so. larger again yeah especially post pandemic the doldrums was before the pandemic and then the pandemic just killed it i mean that was really bad but there is a yeah. bigger interest in it can you speak to that a little bit how what has your experience has been for well i just i just know from my personal experience that you know this seems like this uh a little bit more gigs happening in new york city anyway mm -hmm. and uh the places are full people are coming out you know and uh there you go i mean i can't really say much more than that so cats are working you know <laughs> it's it's almost hard for me to, to get a band together for a gig because everybody's working <laughs> you know all my all my usual suspects are working all the time so don't you hate you that know. <laughs> What do you mean? So what do you, what do you, what mean? Do you mean? You're not gonna I, make I, it. Yeah, I got this. I got this. This is like the biggest gig for me for the month, and you can't come. What? And what you, you can't mean? make it. You're gonna be on the road. Yeah. What? <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Well, let me give you this so, guy's yeah, number. So that's you know? that's so that's that's at least that's what's happening in the city. It's like seems like cats are working and uh, people are out and checking out the music and it's all good. You know. Man, you got you gotta love that. Yeah. You had mentioned um, a while back about uh, you used to go to Europe about four times a year yeah i was poland france yeah um i just i just i went to italy about three or four months ago for a week uh before that i was in poland for a week or so and uh, yeah gigs little clubs jazz clubs you know, a couple of little restaurants and then there's always one big concert. Right. You know, that kind of that kind of pays for the tour, you know. <laughs> so you know, there's always one big one and then a bunch of little ones, you know. So so yeah, I used to do that. I used to go to, to France. Uh, I think that 
it was in the south of France near Nice, and it was like a week uh, jazz camp, and that was fun. I did that for about three or four years, but I think they shut down during the pandemic. And uh, uh, let's see, Poland. I started going to Poland back in around two, 2015, I guess, and I've been going back and forth there. Big jazz crowd in Poland. Yeah, they, they 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 love the music. They come out, you know, and, and they support it. It's it's all good there. Well, let me ask you a question about the audiences, yeah. the European audiences yeah. versus the American audiences, or can you compare and contrast, or maybe find similarities? Yeah, you know, there's it, it. I think it's the same everywhere, really. You know, I I think maybe there's more of an understanding of the music amongst the general uh, audiences in Europe. They kind of know the history more, I think. But the people come out in in the United States and they like what's happening right now. Maybe they don't know the history of it, but they come and check it out you know, right. just to see what it is or just to make a scene, you know, but they'll show up. But people come out, you know, for different reasons. Uh, but I think there's more knowledge of the music amongst the general population, maybe in Europe, you know, amongst the people that would even step foot inside a jazz club. You know, there's you know, more of them know about the history. I have a friend. I have a friend that's over in Beijing, and he he says that's <laughs> for sure over there that. Yeah, there's like seven jazz clubs and uh, within a half a mile of his house, you know, and yeah, it's, it's like, but, but um, you know, I was going to say that if if owners manuals for electronic equipment in the music business have anything, if you if you see a domestic owners manual for a German product, it's a it's a book. Yeah, yeah. And then when they bring it to the U.S., it's this. Yeah, it's because yeah, those yeah. people want to know everything about everything. Everything. About everything. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah, want to yeah. know about everything. An interesting thing that it came across the other day, I don't know, if it, is that jazz guitar, the guitar itself, the archtop guitar that we all, you know, know and love and, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, what is that? <laughs> it's a guitar. Um, I mean, what? Usual. It's made by, a guy made, named, that? made by a guy named Ryan Thorell. Oh, okay. It's a Frank Vignola nice. model, It's but it's a 16-inch oh, it's, okay. it's body. It's probably... Oh. It's uh, it's 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 kind of a cross between a um, archtop tone and a and a uh, Django tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of thing. I hear you. Yeah. Uh, you know, gotcha. I, I've just had it for I don't know about fifteen years now, I guess, and uh, yeah, it just sits around and I look at it and play it every now. And then. <laughs> uh, Touch it every once in a while. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just said uh, you know to let it know I still love it. You know, yeah, I hear it behind you. <laughs> kind of behind the ears or the tuning keys in this case. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, what I was going to say is that, you know, the arch, you know, like in jazz, what are the instruments, saxophone, trumpet, you know, piano, drums, bass, mm -hmm. you, you know, all those are European instruments, mm -hmm. all of them. I mean, you could argue the drums came, you know, all that, but they're all basically European instruments and the guitar is not. Right. The arch yeah, guitar yeah. is American. So not only is jazz as yeah. an idiom, an American yeah. invention. But but yeah. the guitar is the only instrument that's played in that that is also was was born here in the USA, and I think that's significant. So I just, which was, it was born it was it, the, the guitar as we know it was born here. The arch top guitar born in Africa. You know, yeah. yeah, the arch top guitar. You know. Yeah. yeah no. When I was a when I was a sophomore in high school, I was Af a yeah. freak, and I I yeah. did a paper on that. I did a oh yeah. My term paper was you know the the origins of, of the guitar. Yeah, but the mm -hmm. arch top guitar the, the arch the, top yeah the violin cut if you will is uh, was Lloyd Lohr. That that's how that all happened. Mm -hmm. But yes, absolutely, it did mm -hmm. come from Africa. What would you like people to know about you, Ed? Well, gee, you know, I'm a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I like to play the guitar. <laughs> I like to read books. I like to watch movies. No, you know, I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm just uh, trying to get better at my instrument, you know, and, and, and try to, you know, stay in shape with that and, uh, you know, play with as many people as I can, try to 
work as much as I can, God willing, health. As long as the health stays in good condition, you know, I can make these gigs. And I was talking with a friend of mine uh, on uh, Facebook, and I he had a tape of a concert that I did in New Haven. And I told him, with Dizzy, back in the early 80s. I saw that. And and I told him, I said, yeah, Count Basie opened the show and they rolled him on stage in a wheelchair. <laughs> and, and and he had a picture of that. <laughs> oh, and I was man. like, man, man, I'll, you know, if it if it has to be, I'm I'm right there with him. You know, just roll me on stage, give me the guitar, and I'll play. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm down with that. You know, I I'll just say uh, about a year ago. Yeah. I was looking for suggestions for for people for the magazine to interview. I called my friend um, Jackson Evans, who is like the the guy down at Benedetto. Um, okay, Howard, I've heard that How, name. Yeah, Howard Paul is like you know he's the CEO and the Grand Poobah. Yeah, a great guy. I met Howard. I met Howard when he was fourteen or something. He, oh really? Because yeah, because he's he from came, up there. he's from up that he way. Came, yeah, he's from Atlantic City area or something. And he came yeah. to see Dizzy play. <laughs> uh, Howard Howard's is a, is a great guy and a huge supporter and you know yeah really. but uh but jackson is also a player but he's he's the guy you know i mean you know and i yeah. said hey hey jackson i said look I, I'm, I'm i need some suggestions for you know for people you know for the magazine and yeah. and the first name out of his mouth was you oh huh. and uh, Thank you. I, I thought that was significant you know yeah. Jackson Evans, Benedetto, you know, you're the first, you know, first guy out of his mouth. And then Peter, I said, well, who's going to be the, who, who are going to be the, the headliners this year? And he said, you know, you and Rodney. And I said, wow, mm -hmm. very, very cool. Great yeah, choices. Nice. Uh, you know, I just yeah. did a gig with Rodney about three months ago. We played, we did a little two guitar band thing. Really? At a club here in New York. Yeah. And it was great. It was, had fun. You know, man, I, I love that guy, you know? Yeah. His his intellectualism, backed up by the fact that he can actually do shit, is just, <laughs> well. He was always like that. See, I knew I knew Rodney when he was like nineteen. Yeah, he was like he you know he had chops then. Yeah, you know? and, and 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 you know then he got the gig with Dizzy. He was playing with Chico Hamilton, and then yeah. Dizzy hired him, and he started playing with Dizzy. And, you know, like all the all the young guitar players would follow him around. So I I knew Rodney. You know, he's yeah. Chop, chop master, even uh, back then. <laughs> he's an, he's an historian. You know, he can tell you everything. There, well, you're you are as well. But you know, he can tell you everything about you know about all the music and where it came from and how it did this. And yeah. then he can also play it, and right. um, and he can articulate it. And it's you know, right. uh, you know, I mean, I, I, yeah. those you and you know, people like yourselves. I mean, I you're my favorite kind of people. Because yeah. you understand yeah. what the hell's going on, so not only do you have it intellectually, right. but you also have it physically. You got it in your soul. You got right. it in your heart. You got it. You know, you're, you're out right. there doing it. So right. you and Rodney are going to have a hell of a time out there. I mean, I think yeah. it'll be it'll be really really great. Um, I haven't been to Denver since 1980 81 with Dizzy. <laughs> That's the last time I've been to Denver. It's still a mile high. <laughs> no, I think you can. Yeah, okay. You can count on that. I don't think uh, you know. I'll bring my oxygen with me. You know what? Don't laugh. My mask. You don't laugh. Um. Yeah. So talking about the other guitar players that you that you worked with that you admire. I mean, I know you. I know that you, that's always a tough thing to say because you leave out people and you, you know, people are afraid to leave out people. But you know, you've you've mentioned Peter. Um. Yeah. You've mentioned Peter Bernstein for for people that yeah. didn't hear that. I'm doing um, I'm doing a gig with uh, uh, Freddie Bryant on Saturday. We're doing a two guitar band thing Saturday night. I like I like I really like what Freddie's doing. Freddie yeah. Bryant. Uh, I did a gig a couple of weeks ago, two guitar band with uh, Greg Scaff, who's a great player. Greg Scaff. I also met Greg when I first moved to New York. I'm writing and, things down here. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know everybody. Yeah, Greg. Yeah, you should talk to him. I will. So uh, he he was playing with Chico Hamilton at the time, and then a bunch of different people. Then he's 
who's been on the Broadway scene for the last 15 or 20 years. Very cool. But he's a great player. You know, I I can't really think of any. Of course, Ted Ludwig, you know, he's yeah. great. You know, I mean. Yeah, we, uh, we love Ted. Na- the, all, all the names escape me now that I'm under pressure. to. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, you know, anybody. What, that, what that do you swings, mean you don't know? Yeah. <laughs> anybody that swings and has some blues up in their playing, I, I dig it, you know. So. Yeah, it's interesting that, that you're playing a lot of these guitar duo things, if you will, or, or band. Yeah, or I like that. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I like what that. what about that? Um, because a lot of guys don't want another guitar. It it it, it yo, know, I I enjoy that, and I like hearing the other cats play up close. You know, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I enjoy that. You know, I watch them. Yeah, learn know, something yeah. maybe. Yeah, but it, not not physically watch, but. No, I'm I, there on the stage, you know, and yeah, use the right. ear, you know, because yeah. I, I see a lot of a lot of cats like watch the hands, you know. Oh, I, yeah, I try yeah. not to. I try not to do that. I yeah. try to turn my head away and just listen yeah. to what they're doing, you know. You hear the sound coming out of the amplifier and the choice of notes and and the volume that they use, and you know, I, I listen to that, you know, when, when they're playing dynamics, yeah, yeah, and. Um, so that's that's fun for me. And when way. I do interviews and I do a lot of these, I almost exclusively watch YouTube videos. Yeah. To get an idea of what they are because I want to see what a, I don't want to see what a guy does in his basement. You know? Right. I, I want to see what <laughs> Right. <laughs> Plan, you know. Yeah, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I don't care what you yeah. do in your basement. Yeah. Uh, I want to see what he does in a band with a band setting. Right. I want to see how exactly. he interacts with the drums. I want to see how exactly. he interacts with the, with the exactly. bass. How does he interact exactly. with the keyboards? What, how, if, what I is, see, if I see some guy on Instagram moving his fingers around real fast, I just go right past that. <laughs> you know? Well, what did, really? What did, what did, I know me too. What did B.B. <laughs> King say? You know, yeah. it's a conversation. When you talk with somebody that you like, you don't yell at them all the time. Right, right, You know, right. you just... Right. Say a few words, get your message mm-hmm. across. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's okay to use that as sauces and pickles, as we used to say back in the day. But you know, it too too much uh, too much candy on the ice cream, you know, on the top. Too many sprinkles, right. and it tastes like crap. Right. You know, right. it's a right. couple of them. Right. Yeah, that can be okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, see, so, I'm, I'm kind of spoiled. I, I... I come from a generation where there was no YouTube, so we had to go out and hear guys play, you know. Right. And and I really enjoyed that going to the club and trying to sit as as close as I could, you know, to Buddy Guy and Junior Wells or Pat Metheny with Gary Burton. I saw him, you know, uh, you know, he was like eighteen or nineteen. I saw yeah. him play. And he was great. Um, you know, all these guys, B.B. King, you know, my first B.B. Wow. King concert, I was sitting right up front. And that was a big learning process for me, too. You know, was, oh, yeah. I learned so much, you know, going out to those clubs and concerts and, you know, doing what I had to do to go see these people. You know, I, I, I saw Grant, too, maybe a yeah. year or two before he passed away. And uh, a friend of mine, I wasn't living in New York yet at that time but he was playing at a small club in new york and my friend and i we drove down gonna see grant green you know blah wow we go to the club and it's empty club is empty and um you know there were maybe 10 people in the place he naturally sat right up front (laughs) and grant killed he killed anyway you know I did yeah. get to see Jimi Hendrix three times live, which was pretty cool. Yeah, me too. Did me you? Too. Yeah, yeah, that was that was that, that was that was pretty. I cool. just I just wrote a post on Facebook this morning that my dad took me to my first Jimi Hendrix concert. Wow! Because <laughs> you know, because my dad's a jazz fan and, and he yeah. played the music in our home all the time, and, yeah. and he liked guitar in particular. You know, he liked Kenny Burrell and he liked Grant Green, Wes. A little less than that, but he liked Kenny and Grant. So he had heard about Jimi Hendrix, you know, seeing the magazine articles and sure. whatnot, you know. So I said, I told him, I said, yeah, I want to go see 
Jimi Hendrix, he's playing blah, blah, blah. I says, I'll take you. We'll go. <laughs> so he, he drove me to the concert. And he, he dug it, you know. So, okay, here's a, here I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit, just a little bit, not too bad. Any musicians, top, you know, any music, they can play any instrument, don't have to be guitar or anything like that. But who would you say were your top five influences? Grant Green, Albert King, Red Garland, Wes Montgomery, Jimi Hendrix. Um, those were my early influences. Uh, how many was that? Was that that's four? A, that's, I think that's, <laughs> well, uh, Grant uh, Green. Yeah, Wes Montgomery, Red Garland, Jimi Hendrix, and uh, yeah. you said uh, somebody else. This, 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 so Albert King. Albert King. Now that's a surprise. I mean, yeah. I'm not surprised by listening listen to you play. But I, but I could, I could list about ten more, really. But you know, yeah. Uh, All I right, was, go ahead. Give well, me a few. You know, give me a few uh, more. James James Brown, when uh, he started doing funk like Cold Sweat. In 1965 oh, yeah. or 66, you know, I was like 11, then 10, 11 years old. Yeah. But I, I really dug that, you know. Oh. Uh, cold sweat, that kind of funk. Yeah. James Brown. Uh, 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 yeah. Cool in the Gang later on in the 70s, like the early 70s, Cool in the Gang. Not the ladies' night Cool in the Gang, but yeah. chocolate buttermilk Cool in the Gang, <laughs> you know, from 1971, <laughs> you know. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Ah, I got you. Uh, <laughs> you know, Miles, Miles Davis, any of those Miles Davis quartet, quintets. Right. The first Miles Davis record I got, I was still playing rock and roll, really, stuff. But I bought Miles Smiles. And I was like, what the hell are they playing? You know, but but I said, I like that drummer. Jimmy Cobb yeah, was that Cobb. Jimmy? No, Cobb no, it was it was it was Tony Williams. Oh, Tony, Tony Williams. Williams. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, with the with the ride symbol and the stopping and the starting, and I was like, wow, I really like that drummer, and 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 the freedom. You know, they they play a melody, then they go completely away from the harmony and come right, right back, you come right back. And right. I was like, wow, how, how did they do that? <laughs> you know. So I, you know, that was a big influence too. You know, an early influence that kind of pulled me into the jazz thing more. And then I started confiscating my dad's records and listening <laughs> and, li and listening to his record collection. You know, yeah, Charlie Parker, and Dizzy Gillespie, you know, Monteca, the, the black and white Columbia cover with yeah. Dizzy's like this. <laughs> um, we, who else? Uh, Gigi Grace, Donald Byrd, he had. Uh, Dexter Gordon, he, had, he liked Dexter Gordon. Uh -huh. so I was listening to all of that stuff when I was like 11, 12, 13, 14, you know. Some of it I un I kind of liked, some, you know, I didn't really understand. I think, yeah. I think when I bought Miles Smiles, I was like, maybe I was like, that was my first jazz record. So maybe I was like, that I bought with my own money. It was maybe 13 or 14 I was when I bought that. I've never asked anybody this question before. What's your favorite thing about being a musician? Oh, meeting meeting new people, playing with my friends who were, were all, most of them, you know, all of them are world-class musicians. I enjoy making music with them camaraderie uh you know the occasional phone calls i get from hey how we doing what's happening you know uh yeah just making music playing playing primarily what i want to play you know because right now most of the gigs i get i you know they're my gigs you know i get to play what i want with great musicians and uh, that's what keeps me going well you it's it's apparent from observing you play and hearing the music that mm -hmm. you're playing, that a big a big subject with me is connecting with people, with human beings. Right. And the very first thing out of your mouth was meeting new people. Yeah. And you're meeting them from something from deep, you know, these are my words, not yours, but I, if I'm going to interpolate and extrapolate, it would be, you know, your heart to theirs, if you will. Right. Uh, I think that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. 
I want to thank you, Ed, for thanks. Thanks for having me. For being here today. It was a great yeah. conversation. Yeah. Um yeah. I really do appreciate yeah, but, it. Listen, yeah, enjoy no enjoy enjoy Grenada. Um <laughs> Yeah, I got to get back in the water. It's getting you know, hot. I got to get back in the water. You, you got to put the lime in the coconut and uh, drink yeah, it right. all up and, uh, you know, have a couple of Coronas on me. And, uh, <laughs> okay, I will. You're looking, Thanks. You're, you're looking good, sir. Thank you. Uh, thank so you. Bob Baker for Jazz Guitar Today with a big thank you to Ed Cherry for, for being with us. Thanks, buddy. Right. Appreciate it, man. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye. All right.